I've always felt different. I've always seen things, but when I tried to express them as a child, I was always told to ignore it. There were people that I didn't know that came to me and said, I have this message that I keep getting that I have to deliver to you. All of a sudden, out of the shadows, a homeless man just jumped right in front of me, and he said, I'm a soul just like you. I love it. I wanted to understand the universe and who and what we are and what are we doing here. Well, we're all part of this amazing soul wave tapping into each other. This was a major life change. You are a light. You have helped me a ton. Thank you. You've given me the courage to live more from my soul. Millions of people are awakening. So wake up with Michelle Miche. Be pleased to hear the best-selling authors and experts in the fields of cutting-edge self-help, personal growth, metaphysics, and spirituality. The soul path of awakening. Understand what living awake is. Hello there, soul lights. How's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome. If you're new to the podcast, great to have you here. And those of you that have been traveling us with us for a while, it's always good to connect with you. All right, I'm just getting my tea here. You hear movement in the background. I've got my friends' little doggies, Dorje and Monkey. Yes, beautiful little... Um, Yorkie, and a Chihuahua, so, um, but they do like to be yappy. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, anyway, if you want to listen uh, by, you know, in the chat, that's great. Um, you can, If you want to ask questions, you just need to do a BTR uh, profile, Blog Talk Radio profile, and I will answer questions there. If you would like to listen by phone, that number is 347 Five three nine five one two two three four seven five three nine five one two two, and press one on the keypad if you have a question, you want a reading, you want to chat, um, whatever. If you want to talk, do that. Um, also, everybody, please, um, if you listen to the program, love it if you would um, go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts and give a five stars, especially if you call in and get readings. That would really be helpful. We're doing a bit of an expansion in the next three months, so that would help. Also, by going to my YouTube channel and uh, subscribe, let me know you're an Awakenings podcast listener also. And we are also starting uh, to transfer the podcast also to um, YouTube. So you can go to Awakenings, I think it's Awakenings Podcast or Awakenings with Michelle Mache Podcast, something like that. And uh, we will be doing episodes over there also. What else, what else? Um, Yeah, Patreon and also you can connect with me on Patreon and also soulplayground.life. I think that's that's it. Just lit my candle, got my tea, And uh, looking forward to connecting with all you. I see people already in the queue. That's great. We'll be getting to those questions. Yeah. Hello, everyone joining. Yeah, so um, lots going on energetically. You probably feel it. I want to just touch on one thing, and then I'm going to get to calls because it looks like we have a lot of callers, uh, which I love. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, like, oh, I don't, I'm not remembering things or I'm not feeling as connected, you know, to my past. And I did talk about this a lot in um, the Patre- my Patreon groups and also the videos that I do, um, Deeper Dive into Metaphysics and Spiritualism. And it is really the Patreon, if you utilize it, you know, you can ask me anything, especially if you're doing the monthly, you know, groups. You can get readings. You can get um, – we're starting to do more tailored uh, stuff in regards to manifesting and also connecting in on a soul level. I look at it from a spiritualist and metaphysical point of view. But anyway, I've been talking about this, that we're going to be less at, connected to our past and – Boy, it, it's really happening. I, I noticed it, um, oh, I don't know, about a year ago, a couple years ago, actually. I was like, wow, I'm not really attached. And it's not that you're not remembering your past. It's a very 
interesting thing to kind of deal with, and, and it's part of the ascension process of giving, getting into the higher vibrational frequency of yourself and life itself, and therefore your experiences. So when we when we have a focus a lot on a past, a present, and a future, you know, it's like th- that the energy is is kind of divvied up, right? We're we're playing out more the duality that there's a past. And there's a present and there's a future, right? So it's always this duality or past and present or past and future or present and future. So we are then playing out more resonance that is of the dual nature. Now that's always going to be on the earth plane. The duality or dual nature is part of manifestation. However, as we ascend and expand in consciousness and awareness, we get more into the subtle energy, which is more the interconnectedness of everything and everyone. It's 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 not just a life force animating energy, but it is it's also um, the I call it the building blocks of consciousness or creation. It is the substance, the woof, the dwarf, the thread. And so, as we extend or expand more into those aspects of our being through the subtle energy. We're literally bringing energy that we have designated being in the past, these units of energy bringing them forward. And so you lose the attachment because everything is by vibration. So our past is actually also a vibration, right? Everything is a vibration. You guys are going to hear me getting little treats right now. for the. So if you hear me rustling around, I don't want them to bark. <laughs> this will give them something to chew on. So our pa- it, whatever whatever separates even us whatever separates is always separating by vibration vibration frequency resonance and coherence so the frequency of something plus the, what it's what it's vibrating or resonating to determines the experience or expression of it whether it's in the immediate now or the past and this is why, in some level, our past has had a bit of a denser energy. We're more anchored in our past. Now, because we're in this major becoming, as we're connecting more into the subtle energy, we're in this major becoming, and that is the soul. And so it's a little off-putting because we're getting more and more into the becoming aspect of us which means we're constantly becoming, we're constantly opening to more and more, more and more love, light, awareness and wisdom, more, you know, more and more uh, consciousness, right? More and more awareness. And the truth is we've always been in that, but because we've been operating very much from the Saturnian time, um, you know, that father time, uh, Kronos, it's just denser, okay? And it's almost like when you edit something and you stretch it out. I've been doing video editing. By the way, I'm really, because <laughs> I had to get a new camera and I didn't have enough disk space, um, so I'm still working. It's taken me four days to edit. Uh, I digress, but those of you who are waiting for the pick-a-card, hopefully it's up today. Otherwise, i got to wait till I pick uh, up the new camera in the next couple of days in the in the mountains. It went to my other address. Uh, anyway, so that's just so if you're wondering about that. Okay, so think about if you've ever video edited, you can stretch, right? When you stretch the images within the video, the frames, they get smaller and they get longer. When you push it, you know, into the present, then it gets very, it, it gets you know, bigger. It's bigger. It's kind of boxier looking, right? So in a way, we, as we stretch time, it 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 lengthens in a sense. Now, what's interesting is it both lengthens, I don't want to say this, and shortens at the same time, but the images of the pictures are, are lengthened because they have, they vibrationally have much more juice, much more life force animating energy, much more consciousness. If, if, if you're kind of following me on this. So we're reclaiming all that energy and bringing it forward for the manifestations. Now, part of this is also, again, as you ascend 
or extend or expand, you have less focus on the past or a past, present, and a future. Everything becomes the now moment, more of this now moment. That doesn't mean you don't plan for your future, but you do it in the sense of this unfolding or becoming. You literally see and feel that becoming. And this is why you can know things. This is why for me as a channeler, and some of you have done workshops with me, and so whether it's workshops on becoming more intuitive and strengthening your intuition, the sixth sense, or becoming more psychic, or learning to channel, we always connect in through the subtle energy and extend and expand from there because everything is there. The, the template's there. And the only thing that separates it out, again, is by vibration degree. So for some of you that are thinking, what, why am I not as attached to my past or am I not caring or thinking about it? And... Those dimensional aspects of you are less animated because the vibration has shifted. You know, here's another example, and this is kind of in consciousness or emotional development. You could have a crush on someone, let's say in third grade, and, or let's say you're in fifth grade and they're in third grade, or maybe fourth grade and they're in third grade. But then you get to sixth grade and you just don't notice them. You don't even see them anymore. You know, and especially that happens, I think, from kind of like from middle school to high school, even if it's a year different. A lot of times you just don't see that person or those people because your focus has changed so much. You know, it even happens like, I guess, teens, late teens to early 20s. Let's say somebody that's, you know, well, think about it. Somebody that's 16 and you're 10, you're not really going to be into them, right? And you're like, okay, that's only, you know, six-year difference, but there's a lot there. Maybe when you get in your 30s or 40s or you're 50 and they're 44, that that's a different thing. But when you're 16 and they're 10, <laughs> those, those six years is quite a different consciousness, right? So I would say just, it's again, you're going to have the memories. There's just less charge. There's less emotional charge. And there is less, there, there is less energy. There is less, there is less focus, you know, but it's still there. So don't worry. It's not disappearing. You know, some people have said, you know, if, not just in my Patreon. We talked about it a couple Saturdays ago, but I've been getting that, message from quite a bit like oh i just saw my i didn't even feel connected or this was so important to me or i keep looking back in the past and it's like that energy you know because of it's really getting subsumed because eventually as we connect more through the subtle energy into our higher self living more from the higher self from the soul the the ego eventually subsumed into the the soul I mean, now as you're doing the soul alignment, and there's a, we look at higher self and lower self, which is really only one self. We're talking about vibration. However, at some point, and again, not that the ego is bad. I want to. I always say this, but we will have a point where we don't have that function, that neural, physical, physiological, mental, emotional, psychological function will become moot, a moot point or aspect, atrophy, and then be extinct. And when there is no ego referencing, you are completely in the moment. And it's not even a meditation moment. It's not a be here now moment. It's very, very different. Those of you that are already starting to experience this, you notice that it's different. You notice that you feel you feel different. Now, again, you can call in because the truth is when we remember something or someone, we don't remember the first, and, and there's a lot of, I learned this also in my hypnotherapy school, and, and, and there's a lot of research into this um, psychologically and also psychiatrically with, with um, brain science. We only remember something once, 
And then after that, we have to reassemble it by what we remember. This is why it degrades over time. We have to put it, we have to call it back in and reassemble all the pieces to it. And so the memory that we have, you know, only lasts for so long unless we keep reassembling and reassembling and reassembling, but it's never exactly the same, right? So that ego part of us that remembers a status quo, it remembers how something was and wants to go back to that, or that was better, that was good. But when we are moving into that unfolding, and again, I say it's more than a now moment because it's second by second and probably even a shorter duration than that, it, it's a seamless. It's more of a seamless consciousness to infinite source and through the unified field of consciousness, which is the subtle energy. Then you are instantly creating all the time, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're doing, whatever the solutions are. There doesn't have to be a going back because when we go back, we're not in our intuition. It's not that it's wrong or bad. That's been the game: analyzing, looking, going back figuring it out, remembering, oh, I did this, or they did that, you know, all of this, history, and bringing it forward. This is why it's really so important, and you're seeing right now a lot of wounds coming up about past situations on the earth plane, and particular, you know, specifically this victim, martyr consciousness, or power over, under power, master, slave, there, there's a lot coming up about that, because it's constantly holding on it's holding on to what happened and, and looking at the narrative in the present through the lens of what's happening in the past. And this is why our true freedom comes when we can look at things differently and really let that go. But, that, but, but we're in a still revenge society. You did that to me. I did that. And you guys, definitely in the new platform, the way I want, I'm going to be weaving in much more of what I see as a conscious and trance channel and the messages I get from the guides to show how the awakening is taking place. And you can see it in some public things that are happening. And I'm just, I'm not going to get totally into it today because I want to get to callers. But, you know, probably Kanye, Kyrie, you're seeing all this thing with the blacks or African-American, you know, the Jewish people, this and that, you know, it, the police, the, the institutions, the banks, and, and playing all this out, this, this pattern that's been there thousands and thousands of years, and we, re, and we reach back, I don't want that to happen again. Well, guess what? It's not going to happen again because our consciousness has changed. <laughs> we may get some version of it, especially if we keep going back into the past. And I can tell you also this from, you know, I've had a weird path sometimes with people. I've had people do some really horrible things. And and even, you know, clients acting out. And then they want to come back because something has happened in their life. And some of you, you know, I mentioned something that happened at a spiritual center that was very, very unconscious and I would even go up to them and hug them. And my friends, you know, that knew, because I didn't talk about it, were like, oh, Michelle, why would you do that? And I'm like, because I'm not getting in that game. Because they're acting out lower vibrationally. I don't have to. Now, I'm not saying I'm Saint or Mother Teresa. Yeah, of course, I've acted out unconsciously. Um, but I absolutely tried to limit that to my personal life <laughs> and not my professional, you know. And so... When you have someone, let's say, that's triggered in therapy or in session and they're like, you know, angry at you and acting out and then they come back because they got diagnosed with something that's very dire and then they call you and leave a message on and go, you probably don't want to work with me again, and, but you're the only one I can trust. I did so well with you. You helped me so much. Do I hold on to that? No. And sometimes I want to. Sometimes I'm like, God, oh, that doesn't seem fair. But then when I get into the higher self and I get into the idea of service, I'm like, you know what? It wasn't about you. Handle your wounds. Handle your beautiful little inner child, that, that wounding. And sometimes those people that those kinds of situations have happened, 
oh my God, it's even been more beautiful and transformative. Especially a couple of them I'm thinking about that had like major health stuff going on. And they turned around. Even the doctors couldn't believe it. They were like, oh, my God. One of them was dying. One of them came back, and they were actually dying. And they did doctors didn't know what was going on. And they couldn't keep food down. They were like, they had lost, you know, and the hypnotherapy and the healing work. And I actually thought of it like, oh, my God. That is higher consciousness to act out and then to come back and say, hey, you know, let's do this. I know it was a stinker, but, let, you know, that to me is like, whoa, that's God. <laughs> that is, because, you know, any time we can look at what we've done, and again, I think to me when you have coaching or therapy, or it, people act out. I tell all the time with people that I work with, I'm like, look, they're at, when people make that call to start the deep dive, pricklies are going to come up, wounds. Or people jump in and they're like happy and then all of a sudden they hit a skid and stuff starts coming out and, you know, they're upset about it or they don't want to look at it. So I just think, you know, we're moving into this time where we it's about getting on and over it. I mean, it's again, I'm a therapist, so yes, you have to – heal you have to be wounded be angry you have to go through all the emotions you have to take care of yourself but that should be something like brushing your teeth that should be something oh you get up something happens somebody says something and you're like oh i'm triggered oh my god let me do my inner work you know for me let me do my five-step emotional clearing process projection perception okay and if we all would do that we would have so much less acting for one, gossip and acting out against others and blaming them for what happened a year ago, years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200, 250 years ago. And again, it's not to diminish. It's it's just part of it is that's also where we're going, and it is also our freedom that something can be different. We can have a different experience when we are in that now moment of unfolding, when the unfolding is happening. Because in the unfolding, that part of us always wants to do what is the most life-enhancing. But it has to work with us and the circumstance. It has to work with our emotional development. That's why emotional clearing and repatterning is so important. Is because spirit, God, the all that is, our higher self, the 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 unified field of consciousness, the creative innate intelligence of the all that is, however you want to look at it, can only work with what's there. And if there's a lot of blocks and stops and misunderstanding and miscommunicating, if there's a lot of that held in place, there's only that's going to create one level of expression and experience than to be able to open or open that wound up and go, okay, ooh, this is, I don't know about this, but let's let's just keep it open and see what happens. So that's where the magic is, and I think that's where more people are going to, um, you know, experience that more. All right, Radiant Soul Lights, let's get to callers, 347-539-5122. Let's press 1 on the keypad, and then you're in the queue. Hi, are you on, you're on air. Hello? Hello? Hi, you're on air. Oh, yes, hi, my name is Patricia. Hi, Patricia, welcome. What's your question? Uh, yes, I'm, um, I've been you know, doing a, a great deal of cleansing and emotional, mental and all that and you know, getting on this new path. I've still uh, been dealing with and how do I stop this being treated with suspicion. This has been all my life. And I mean, especially in public places or spaces where I'm in a library, I'm being watched uh, by some some staff. And, You're feeling this? Uh, it's it, it's actually happening. 
Um, and it's different types of circumstances. Uh, and it can just be this comment from other people, this very con- you know, dominating, conflicting. And where I'm living at now in Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, the energy here is just so negative and just heavy, yeah. you know, like a a wet, you know, gasoline-smelling, you know, blanket. But yeah. I've been, still, been doing clearing and releasing, but it's still, and then, yes, I'm going to be relocating as quickly okay. as I can. What can okay. I do? I mean, it's still happening. So I guess this is something on the ancestral level. Um, well, sometimes it's also just our experience, right? That's that's where we are, what we're meant to experience. So you know, well, I've done that. I, just I know, but you're moved. moving. But until you're moving, until you're moving. So th- what's your what's your question to me? How can I help you? How can I? I mean, well, just clear it and release it. Because I mean, obviously, um, I mean, this has been you know I've lived you know in another state, and I mean it's the same the same thing. Uh, you know, and it's. You know, if I'm coming into a library, if I'm coming into a store, especially to spend my money, um, then obviously I'm not going to do that. You're treating me, you know, with suspicion and for nothing. You know, Mm -hmm. and I mean, it's like it's many situations. Okay, Katricia, I can see what you're saying. The best thing that I would say for you is that I can offer you, if because it's not a psychic question, is is the repatterning. And you can go to my website and download for free the basic five-step emotional clearing process and also projection perception. They're in Soul Path tools or Soul Path support. And and start and start there if you want or need the advanced version. It's an MP3, but you can copy and paste five-step emotional clearing process and then projection perception and how to take back projections that's what i would suggest for you okay or and sometimes we need to work with someone to be able to do that but try that on your own since it sounds like you're used to doing some healing for yourself um and then of course let us know uh how you do how you're doing okay thanks right. katricia much All peace. Right. hi you're on air Hi, thank you for taking my call. This is Miranda. Um, hi, Miranda. Yes, my hi. My husband and I are looking for homes, and uh, so we've been looking for a little while and wondering what you see around this. Um, and then we also need to sell our current apartment. Uh, so whatever you pick up. Okay. I'm kind of getting between January and March, so or February, um, more Aquarius time, maybe into early spring. Um, it feels like you're going to look at a couple places that you really like, but then you're not sure which one. There's this kind of going back and forth. Um, I also am seeing travel towards the end of the year, so you may be looking in another area even than where you are now. Uh, you might be widening your search, is what I'm hearing. But definitely, I do see you getting a place, and you know, your place. You'll be able to get out of your place. It's just a little bit further off than what I'm seeing. And even if there is something that comes into the close of the year, like December, January, I, for some reason, I feel you not jumping on it. Now, I don't know if that's because you have to sell your place or I don't know, but it shows some place can almost come through and then it ends up, you're like, for some reason, the two of you just, I don't know why, don't go for it. Maybe it's the area, I'm not sure. All right, Miranda? So you see see us liking something but not following through? Yeah, for saying? some reason. Yeah, for some reason, there is a place. Come, I, cause, now are you near snow? I keep feeling no. snow in winter. I mean, no. We're, I mean, I mean, we are on the east coast. I mean, so yeah. I mean, 
but like yeah, not okay. near like a not 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 like a near a ski resort or anything. But no, I didn't but, say ski resort. I said snow. Yeah. yeah. So I'm getting something. Know, yeah, yeah, with colder weather. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there feels like there is something that you're looking at for. I don't know what the reason is why you don't. I don't know if it falls through or you're not yet ready. Maybe it's too close to getting, you know, getting out of your place. Um, mm-hmm. Because I do see more leaves on the trees. Um, still kind of brownie, light brownie to then starting to get green. So that's why I'm getting more February, March. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Miranda. Thanks for okay. calling in. All right. Thanks. Take care. Hi, you're on air. You're on awakening. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, Michelle. Um, my name Hi. is Julia. Mhm. Um, Hi. So I have a uh, I have a question. Um. Do you sense anything about um, my career um, or any major life changes? It, 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 in, in your career? Yes, like um, okay. I guess you could say business related. Let's see what's coming up for. And your first name again? What's your first name? It's Juliet, like Juliet, but with an Juliet. S. Juliet? Juliet. 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 Juliet with an S. Juliet. Juliet. Okay, Juliet. Yes. Okay, Juliet. Well, let me know what you're thinking about. Well, there definitely is. Wow, Jupiter, it looks really good. Could be a new... um, Could be... Are you looking at something contractual... Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. So it does show a contract. If that's what you're looking for. So that does Okay. Um besides career, um I am looking to kind of um I'm just looking to kind of transform my life and and get out of kind of like this stuck phase, like kind of like a phase in my life that I've been in for a while um, and finally kind of move forward to bigger and, and better things. Yeah. So tell me, okay, so what exactly is the question? So you, you're looking for bigger, big, so I have something to go on. Like, what direction? What do you want me to ask? I, I guess I could be more specific. Um, I I am trying to move, um, but I haven't really been focusing on it um, because there's been setbacks for years. Um, okay, see, that's a whole so different just, question. So let's yeah. focus, because I, I saw something contractual. You, I said, are you looking for something? And you said, yes. Now you're asking something else. So we got to really focus the energy yeah. on the, on, yeah. Okay, let's try again, Suliet. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that would be my main question, yeah. So um, what's the question? Well, well <laughs> I guess it, to put it into a question, um, do you see um, anything about, me and my family moving or anything like that? Okay, that's a whole different question. Okay, let's see. What's coming for Suliet and her family moving? You are, but I'm also going to say kind of similar with... um, other the caller um, before I, I feel for you either you haven't been looking here's what I'm going to say for a lot of people right now if you're looking at moves and you haven't yet moved it's probably not going to be until March April May on you know March on uh, maybe even with you April May because I feel with you there's a lot up in the air do you have kids why am I getting something yeah. at school yeah. 
Yeah, yeah there's something with school, the kid. I, I, I'm getting a, you got a lot going on, so you've got to kind of rein it back in and maybe write out the big vision, what that looks like and, and, w- and where you even would like to go, and then what are small steps that you can do. Because I feel like okay. there's a lot of you've got a lot of moving parts in this decision in the in the move in the job, like do you want to focus more on the job first and then do the move or do you want to you know what I mean instead of trying to yeah. do it all, yeah. And there is something about the kids with school, so I don't know if that's that. They you know yeah. you got to wait you got to wait, or you're looking at schools or you got to wait to move because of the you know I don't know there's something there's something going on with that though. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to happen. Sometimes we have to just prepare more. Yeah. You know, it's like you have to do the um kind of like the tedious stuff. Just the 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 yeah. everyday kind of to-do stuff before the the other can actually happen. Yeah, I I feel like um and I I don't I don't focus on saying this, but I feel like every time I actually focus on moving, there's some kind of setback, <laughs> like every time. So lately, I've then been, that means I've the timing is off. Then you need you pro- most likely you need to focus on your security and stability within, yeah. and then career or job or money or something like that before you make the, the decision. So, because what I get with you when I tune into your energy is I feel like you have this big vision and idea, but there's things that have to go there. There's things that have to be beforehand, right? There's things that have to yeah. be done before. Okay. So don't lose your vision. Don't give up on the vision, but you definitely have to um, pull back just a little bit, pull back the reins, and, and kind of like some boring detail-y stuff, I <laughs> to say it. Okay. <laughs> Is what's needed. That's why it's not that you're not going to move. Um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot wrapping up for people right now, and you're falling into that place, putting things in order. Yeah. So that you can, so you have a better foundation for the bigger vision. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. you're welcome. Bye. Okay. Bye. Oh, good question. Hi, you're on air. Hello. Hi, you're on air. Okay, hey, um, my name is Christian. Um, I actually have a question about, um, I have two careers that I'm actually working in right now and a lot of opportunities that came in, and I feel like I'm about to have a big jump, but I'm trying to, like, get a little bit more, in, uh, possibly more in detail on that, on the direction that I should focus on more. With Oh, Ooh, you're going to love a video that I just started doing that I hopefully it's going to be uploaded today, if not by today or by the weekend, because I'm having tr- on options that I just did, because a lot of people are having options come up. So let's see for you. Think of one option, option number one. Think of that option. Okay. And then, okay, let's see what's... Okay, that looks good. That's cre- a lot of creativity with that, but also you're kind of mm, it's going to be a little bit more work. It might be a little bit further off. There might be more that you need to do with that, either to set it up. Okay, let's look at another one, the option two or whatever the next option is that you're thinking about. Okay, it's all my brain. <laughs> Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. I'm kind of getting options. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of, it's so funny. Yeah, I was, right before I even tuned in, I was getting option two. Here's the deal. I think that your options, you're going to be able to do all of it or multiple, maybe just not all at once. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
But uh, the second yeah. one, for some reason, is is um, reading easier. Does that make sense? It's reading easier yeah, for some it, reason. Yeah, that kind of makes plenty of sense with the, the motion okay. that it's, well, the time that's been put into it so far. Okay, so that's why. Because option two seems like it's either already in motion or it's easier, and that can open up to option number, that can open up to the other option. Now, by the way, um, I think option two is going to open more options for you, whereas option one is a little more dead end, you know, or a little more finite. So if you're going for option two and you and you still want to do option one, I think that's going to be opening, right? Does that make sense? It makes plenty of sense. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm I have, I have now. one more question, though. Um, yeah. Is there a possibility that I could be also moving this year? Not this year, next year. No, not this so. year. No. Yeah, I don't feel yeah, this definitely. year. But are you going to be moving? Yes, I would say yes, absolutely. Okay. But not, and it might be a little, it might be a little bit later than spring because I feel you more traveling kind of trying to see where it is you actually want to move to. Okay. Yeah. All right, Chris. Okay, right, thank Chris? you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Keep us posted. I'm curious. Oh, I will do. <laughs> okay, take care. Hi, you're on air. Welcome. Hi, Michelle. It's Gail. Gail. Hey, you. Hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can I, hear you, yes. I have a quick question for you. I I lost a cabbage on when I was working on a class project, and it has not turned up at all. I've never done this before. And I was wondering if you see me finding it or if you might see where it is. Okay, let's see. Sean, where are you? Well, it's definitely in between something. Okay. And yeah, it's definitely in between some, maybe even cushions. And also, I feel, do you have them in little containers or something with little containers? Yeah, I went through all of that and I have not okay. found it. Yet. Well, because it's it's, I feel it fell in between something. Because I feel like, I was just going to say, I feel like you always put it in those containers, but this time that you didn't. Or it could have fallen, or if some of them fell before, fell on the ground. Or maybe it was in your, because I see it falling out. So it may have fallen and you didn't realize it, like on your, um, like when you're working, like it could have been in your lap or fallen next to your lap. I definitely okay. feel it's near a ta- I definitely feel it's near a table and like a table where you sit around. Okay, so you might be on the floor you're thinking? E- either on the floor or t- it's tucked in is what I see and I feel like you got up you were doing something maybe with pliers or something or some kind of tool. I almost feel like you were yep. yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, and then you got up and it fell. Okay, more on the floor then. Thank you so much. Appreciate floor it. or tucked in, but I'm not sure. Sh- you know, it, it feels like you got up to do something and then there it, it's, you know, it, it fell. So I don't know if it fell further away than where you're looking or it okay, fell. Because I definitely sense. feel you were sitting when you lost it. it you know, you got up or I it did. moved. Uh, yeah, you were definitely sitting. And then I tried to find it. I couldn't find it. I got set up and I got up. Oh, so I, well, I think it already fell. That's why. It already fell okay. before you were looking for it. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank Hope you. Hope that helps. Okay. Take care. Bye. 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 Hi, you're on air. Hi there. Hi. 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 My name's Sue, and I'm calling from Toronto, and I'm quite open. I'm just wondering for a reading. 
And I'd love that you're open. Well, let's see. If there's any, why don't you ask a question? That opens the channel since these are quick reads. Oh, um, yeah. anything out clear? And, tell, and the first name, please? Sue. You're definitely, yeah, I get it. There's something that you need to initiate or, you know, or you've started something, but you need to follow through and put it more out there. And I feel it could be something project-based or creative. And that's where um, I feel your higher self as well as your guides are leading you. And so you also may, because of this, be starting to work differently, if that makes sense. There's, you're going to be structuring how you work a bit differently. Um, but it shows you, you. It's your kind of time to push or put, you know, focus, put the, put the time in, the energy, and the focus into something new. Does that make sense to you? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, really. So it's not that I mean possibly as a project, but not related to work. Pardon me. And not related to work, just sort of something as a project. It looks like I'm a pro- but the project could be work or could turn into work, is what I'm hearing. Whatever it is you're focused it, it, on, it, it, it's about it's about you initiating or moving forward. So if, let's say you wanted a, a new job, then you have to go out and get it. You have to put the energy in. So I'm also getting there's something that you want to do or what you're focused on or maybe you left, you know, kind of started something you didn't complete. It's showing to yeah. go into that. Yeah, it's showing to go into that direction, that that's actually going to open up more for you than what you once thought. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started a book once and I put it to the ah, side. That's there it. we go. There it is. Yeah. That's it. Yes. I'm just sometimes not just sure. Going back, sometimes just going back to something or going back to it in a different way shifts our energy and opens to more possibilities. Because I definitely feel around you, I mean, I'm connection to your higher self. I do feel guides around you. I feel like you're meant to do something more creative and more project-based. Now, even if you have a regular job, this can add something. So maybe it's doing it as an ebook or a Kindle or changing or, or, or doing, you know, not the whole version, but maybe that big book is a couple smaller books. Okay. You got to get, you kind of, you got to get the, you know, the whistle again. You got to get back into that um, creative art flow. That's going to help you generate um, more openings, possibilities, and also income. Oh, so it will generate income, huh? Interesting. Yes, 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 yes. yes. All right, Sue, okay. you take care. All right, talk Thank to you. you. Mm-hmm. Hi, you're on air. Hi, Michelle, this is Valerie. Hi, Valerie, welcome. What's your question? Thank you. Can I get mm-hmm. another energy scan on my throat and left ear? You did one last, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, let's see. And I've been doing some healing, so I want to see how it's going. Okay, good. Let's see. Hmm. Mm, it's better. Now, did you have swelling somewhere? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going down is what I'm seeing. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. And also, I just got a weird hit. Blueberries, antioxidants are good for you. Yeah, definitely. There's a heat, there's healing taking place. So you're rebalancing okay, so something. Then, yeah, because the last time you said you saw you saw something in my throat, and that that was I was curious about that. Is it swell? What have you been doing? It's swelling. It's coming down. Whatever it is. Well, I had had the vibrations in my ear, left ear. Ah, okay. How's that doing? Uh, it's better. It's still there, it's but it's better. at a lower. It's getting better. Yeah. It's, yeah. 
I, I'm getting, for some reason, blueberries, antioxidants, vitamin C. So you could have had a low-grade, I don't know, something, maybe, a, I, don't, I don't know, these are quick reads, so I'm not go, going in-depth, but mm-hmm. it could have been an infection or something. So vitamin C looks good, zinc, whatever you're doing seems to be helping. So I would just, you know, stay with it. Continue. Okay. Yeah. And All right, Valerie, I'm glad you? you called it out. Uh, no, I gotta go. I'm waiting for oh, our okay. guests. I gotta look, but you can call back next week. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll well, be thank here you, Michelle. I appreciate everything you did. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Hi, you're on air. Welcome. Hi, Michelle. It's Syra. Hi, hey, Syra. Welcome to connect with you. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. It's good to talk to you. Um, I had a possible love interest that I was talking to for a while, and he kind of just started recently pulling away. Like, oh, he um, just kind of stopped talking to me. Like, he basically lost my number, and I just I was kind of wondering, like, what made him pull away because I don't know if, like, I did something or if something happened or – you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Now, you didn't do anything. A lot of times, you got to remember, you don't do anything. It's the person. Um, first yeah. of all, I get, definitely get with not not ready. So I don't know if you guys kind of jumped in or too much too soon, but not ready. I do see other girls around him. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, what's going on with Syrah? And just think of him right now, this guy, what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys are kind of broken up. Did he ghost? Because he's is he not reaching back? He's not returning calls or texts, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Um, I hate when people ghost, and now that's like looked at as a regular. I, I just think it's. Ah. Oh, I know. Right? It's so stupid. Okay, let's see. What's what is his um. It's funny with him. I I get him kind of very outgoing, but also moody, depressive, and also has a bit of an anger anger streak. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. So he's got some stuff to work out. He's I don't know if it's stuff at home not going well, but um, I think he's just kind of like, let me just hang out with my buddies and different people and I get with him he's not really ready to like reveal you know it doesn't matter what age people are at some mm-hmm. point we have to get more real in relationships stuff starts coming up you start talking about yeah. feeling things and lo- he's not ready sure. to do any of that yeah so that's what I feel with him it's like he kind of just whatever the, he kind of got scared the- a little and just well, kind of like his own stuff, are you saying? His own stuff, yeah, his own stuff. I just think he's not really ready or yet that type. I feel mm-hmm. like him more partying or hanging out with different people, clowning around. Um, yeah. He's got that life of the party kind of part to him, too. He bounce- So I feel like that's, sure. where he's, that's where he's more at. And... Uh-huh. I think that's where he's going to stay for quite a bit. Even if he hangs out with someone, he could be back and forth. But I don't see mm-hmm. commitment around him at this time. Okay. Okay. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Good to hear from you. And uh, keep of us posted course. as to how you're doing. Okay. Take yeah. Care. Bye. 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 All right, let's see. Looking for our guestie. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to answer one. Now, if you don't get your question answered or you wanted to share something, I will be here um, next week. We're here every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific time, except not usually on holidays, but I know next week for those of you that celebrate it is thanksgiving or give thanks or friendsgiving um but i will be here on wednesday so if you don't get your question answered then uh check back okay hi you're on air what's your first name hi my name is Wilson from ohio what is it 
Filson. Filson? Yeah. Okay, great. Filson. Hi, Filson. What's your question? Um, my question is I was wondering if you could um, let me know if you pick up on anything as far as um, a relationship that I just left in. Um, I, it was kind of toxic, but it was, and it still is extremely difficult to get over. And if you could, like, tell me anything or why, why that may be the case. Okay, it's let's feeling. see. Ooh, it's so hard sometimes with emotions, Philson. It just, because our emotional body hangs on a long time. The mental, intellectual aspect of us, the mental body, it moves on. Um, let's see with this person, what's... Toxic, part of what I feel with you a little bit, you know, the the kind of pop culture and trauma bonding, I, I, I feel like it was good. When it was good, it was really good and good in the beginning. And there's a part of you wanting to go back to that and almost fix it in your mind. And I'm, I'm talking about the emotional body mind. <laughs> it's kind of wanting to go back um, to that. Yet a part of you knows, oh, this is going to be the same thing. There has not been a, a change. So I feel like what it, it's not anything that you're doing. It's one thing will take time, but also focusing on your, your deeper healing of what you want. I'm going to also suggest to you that uh, something I suggested to one of the earlier callers, Katricia, I believe, um, was on my website for free, soulplayground.life, you can copy and paste um five-step emotional clearing process, also projection perception and how to take back projections. You can copy and paste that and use those two tools um, for processing and clearing. And then again, if you if you want the advanced version, it's the five-step emotional clearing process. It's an MP3. Because this is not going to just go away. You're going to, it's like, you're going to, Look at a long-standing pattern of what you attracted or what you attract, and be, and begin to shift from that and and get get that completion within yourself, that more wholeness within yourself, which I do feel you have been addressing it. But th- it was just hand and glove that you know it fit together, and also there were, especially at the beginning, some good things and a lot of hope, and so that part of you is still kind of connected to that, right? Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just going to take a little. Moving on. No, you are going to move on, but sometimes moving on is a process. We have to help ourselves sometimes move on, and also so you don't attract the same thing. Because I do see it as a pattern. This is not like a one-off kind of oops situation. This is like there's a, a pattern there. Um, so will you eventually, you know? come into balance or heal more and move. Yes, of course. Um, but I do feel you there's going to be some need to help with that. Okay. All right. To you, Phil, right. then you take good care. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. I hope this is our guest. Hi, you're on air. This is Cynthia? Hi, Michelle. Yes, good, good, good. Hi, hi. I had a different number for you. Okay, so I was looking for I you know, I so I apologize. Go. I didn't realize. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. So, um, but anyway, I found it back in the um so uh Cynthia, let's jump in. Um my subject that I love. I have loved for years, subtle energy. So I definitely want to get a bit of your background and dive into your, um, you know, book and uh, talk about the subtle energy because that's ooh, one of my passions. Um, so, yeah, so let's start a little bit about your, just whatever you want to share about your background and what I, I'd love to know and also share with our listeners what you were doing before you were doing this and kind of your first, you know, awakening. hmm Mm-hmm. And then how you next steps to get to doing what you're doing now. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on this show. I've been listening in and really enjoying your program. So thank you so much. Oh, um, thank you. you know, you're very welcome. 
Um, you know, I was really lucky growing up that I that I was raised in a family of curious people, and my parents were were my father was a doctor, my mother did accounting things, but they were deeply involved in esoteric studies. So I had a lot of material around me that I could. Oh, you had the I good could, stuff, um, the early stuff. I, I was lucky. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. But it, Things really kind of opened up for me. Uh, we had a lot of animals. My father, people were always bringing my father sick animals to take care of. Animals often died. And I was holding a rabbit once when it died, and I watched the light leave its eyes. And that just opened up this whole profound mystery for me. And, you, you know, and, and really associating life force with light and seeing that light leave. And the other thing that was curious to me is that I'd been holding this rabbit, which was pretty light, but the moment that it died, it became very, very heavy. And it just created this whole curiosity for me about what it was that was happening. And that sort of started my whole journey into Edgar Casey and, and you know, the idea of subtle energy. Um, and so for me, I think it was pretty much an idea. It was intellectual until I began to have my own energy experiences as a massage therapist and and using energy in in massage. So prior to what I do now, I was for you know thirty five years a massage therapist, and now I do naturopathic medicine. Mm, okay. Well, of course, you're definitely with massage therapy tapping into that subtle energy whether people realize it or not right you're doing that absolutely um, yeah for them and um and then you said now what uh naturopathy you're doing yes i i am a naturopathic doctor and specializing in mind body medicine and i do believe that subtle energy is the link between the mind the heart and the body and as we become more aware of the flow of subtle energy and how it impacts us, it um, changes our perceptions. And, you know, one of my big goals in writing this book is to help people understand that their perceptions are their co-creative um, uh, canvas, that perceptions create reality. And it isn't just that perceptions create how we experience reality. Perceptions create reality, co-create reality, and that how we perceive is absolutely important. And you can think of this scientifically as as the the observer affects the experiment. And and how is that possible? It's possible because um, our awareness is this creative capacity. And I think that especially with healing, being able to use awareness as medicine and activate the creative capacity of the body is is pretty essential, especially at this time in in history. <laughs> I agree. Now, so what's so interesting, because a lot of people don't know about this, I am always talking about the subtle energy, teach about it, my workshops, mm-hmm. everything, blah, 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 blah. Believe it or not, you're the only the second person that is, and I've been doing this for a long time, that has this awareness and is talking about. The only other one was... Uh, a physicist that came on the program, and he'd sent his two books in, and I couldn't believe, I was like, I, I about fell mm-hmm. over, because now he didn't know a lot about it, but he had a small chapter on subtle energy, and that's what it was titled. Mm-hmm. And I was, and he said that it will be not just critical, but crucial for people in the new paradigm, because we're talking about the new paradigm, yeah. to become aware of the subtle energy, understand it, and know how to interface and use it. And so I was like, yippee, yippee, you know, that that somebody had even mentioned it. Now you come here, and you've also got a book <laughs> where you've got the path of energy and then subtle energy work. And I was like, oh, my God, is it now starting to get more awareness mm-hmm. or more out there? Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, Hinduism, there are certain traditions that – um, and people associate it more with chakras, but as you know, it's more than chakras. It's like that's like you know, basic, basic. Um, yeah. So tell us a little. Why do you? Okay, let's talk about what it is for our listeners, and what do you see as the importance? Because you just touched on it now, also about the mm-hmm. importance and the co-creative aspect of understanding mm-hmm. the subtle energy. I'm so excited yeah, to have you, you know, on the show, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, 
That, well, thank you. It's, it's interesting that you would talk about the physicist and, you know, the change in the paradigm and subtle energy being the key to that. And I really believe it's true. And the reason that I believe it's true is because we're at this point, you know, I mean, I think we can all agree that we're either going to implode on ourselves and go backwards into the dark ages, or we're going to move forward in a really positive age. And, you know, this is a real crossroads that we're at. And I, and I feel like it's depleted in like Einstein's E equals MC squared equation where we really understand that matter and energy are complementary to each other and that they're different polarities of the same whole. And if you mm. believe that and live that, then you have to accept that matter and energy have equal agency in this dance that we call life. And, you know, life itself is the balance of physical matter and energy. And it's like in this decision we're making, we're deciding, are we going to believe in the agency of matter over energy, or are we going to believe that energy also has agency in the material world? And and that place is the choice for life. Whoa. Cynthia, I love, oh my God, I got goosebumps all over. Yes, are we going to believe? Because the whole Mm -hmm. setup has been the, the... the matter, yeah. matter, the material. Um, now, I find it interesting, too, because astrologically, we're going into um, a predominance of air. And, of course, mm. the new paradigm or Aquarian age is air. And so we're going into that realm mm-hmm. of mentalism, things happening more in the mental realm, which, of course, brings in the ethers or etheric, <coughs> which is where mm-hmm. the subtle energy is. Um I'm wondering, okay, in a way, are you saying maybe there's a flip where we've gone from the material to the energetics of the material or over-focused on the tangible material? Are you perceiving a flip to focus more on the energetics? I am perceiving that that this... No, it's not too simple at all. I feel like that is the challenge of this moment. That is what all Mm -hmm. of the... um, you know, disparities that are coming at us, all of the the physical challenges that we're facing right now, that's the question that we're being asked to answer. Can you believe that energy has as much agency as physical matter? And And as soon as you accept that, as soon as your awareness shifts, then your perception shift and your creative potential shifts. And at the same time, um, we have to ask the next question, which your physicist had asked as well, is how do we consciously function in this energetic reality? Because we are consciously functioning in it all the time. All the time, we're, we're, because energy follows our mind and our attention, we're continually putting our attention on things, negative or positive, flowing our energy to it, making it larger, making it attractive, and and creating the circumstances in our life. So the more conscious that we become at that, um, then the more um, our lives themselves become a projection of a higher reality. And and I and I, I really do believe that's where we're at. <laughs> Yeah, now what you're saying, too, is reminding me of a little bit that I touched on the beginning of the podcast, and I and I kind of got a little, I don't know, I went halfway in. Now you, what you said just sparked something. Because living more connected or consciously connected or living even more, not even forget connected, living through the subtle energy aspects of our being means we're going to consciously be co-creating things, and it's not going to be yeah. a solid, Right. Right. Is it what we perceive to be this solid? It, it, mm. it, I want to share something with you. I'm not going to go into the whole deep story, mm-hmm. but just a little snapshot of it. it. Was years ago I was doing some channeling work, mediumship work, and channeling work at someone's house. Actually, it was in Chicago. I lived there for four years, and when I came out, I was so extended or expanded that nothing was solid, and I was like. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Even walk down the street, the sidewalk wasn't solid. I remember going by Neiman mm-hmm. Marcus. It was on Oak Street. And shoes that I loved. Think, I was looking in the window, and it was moving around with these, like, various colors. And I thought, God, I spent all this money on shoes. They're not even real. They're not <laughs> even solid. How the hell is that? How, how are they charging this kind of money? You know? And it's 
not even <laughs> solid. I was like, wow, it was it was very interesting. It lasted a few hours, and then of course, lo and behold, here I am back. Um, so potentially, what I'm kind of hearing you say and feeling of going more in that direction, which would really be a game changer, paradigm changer, when we're living I from the place. Of uh, this non, the non, which we know, like you said, Einstein. We we hear about that. I mean, there's principles and you know ma- equations that talk about nothing solid, everything's moving. But what what do you think? What would that mean? Or what's yeah, that's important? Really, and how we live. It's a really really good question, and it is the the probably the key question. And I think that we have to face that every single day. And and basically what it means is, are we going to commit ourselves to these principles of subtle energy in the face of all the changes going on around us, or are we going to retreat back into the illusion? And I think it is a, an illusion of material reality. And I love your description of, you know, the world becoming insubstantial, it kind of reminds me of the work that's being done now with um, microdosing with psychedelics and how that is becoming such a major feature in psychiatric care because it can help shift people's perspective out of the pain that they're in into the wholeness and interconnectedness that we are. And what you described there of, of the insubstantiality of things is that sense of being so interconnected with and everything that where we where we start and where we end um you know just becomes less defined. Yes, that's what's and I've had that experience I've had it a number of times and then of course mm-hmm. through hours or day you're you're back into what seems to be this solid um in a more of the, the separate not what mm-hmm. you just said the interconnectedness. But I do believe, I mean, even talking to you, I can feel in your energy field, I do believe we will go there at one point. But like you're saying, we're at this critical time. Mm-hmm. And people are, you know, a little you're nervous of the unknown, the unfolding. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had even clients of mine and students talk about, which I started experiencing a couple of years ago, they're not as attached to their past or their story and they're not remembering it. And it's not all time. It's not anything like that. It's not dementia. You know, these are uh, you know, people in their 30s. It's not that. They're like, going, you know, I just not. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's really happening. Mm-hmm. But how do mm-hmm. you feel? What do you, from what you do in your work and what you see, what do you think helps us make that choice that you're talking about? Yeah. You know, yeah. I think part of it is that just simply the this <laughs> it's gonna sound really bizarre, but so so my husband and I many years ago wrote a book about twenty twelve and the Mayan prophecy. It was not a very good book, I will say that, but we learned uh, quite a lot in our research and one of the concepts that the Maya had was that or have, um, since they do still exist. You know, mm-hmm. one of the concepts is that um the times that we're in are not created by the things that we do, but the things that we do are created by the times that we're in. And the times that we're in, according to them, were where we were placed in the universe, how the planet was going through and the solar system was going through different parts of of the universe. And each time we move, we would have connections to different planetary bodies, different celestial um, events happening. And those interactions and what we would probably call astrology, but I think in a much, much deeper way than Maya understood it, those things created the times. And we in our behaviors were just responding to those times. And so to some degree, I really feel the answer to your question is that this is the times we're in. And according to the Maya, it's because we are coming into the center of the galaxy and receiving these, uh, I w- I'm going to call them new frequencies from the center of the galaxy. I don't like the concept of higher and lower frequencies because yeah. I think that there is value in both. <laughs> Absolutely. And what's denser. Yeah, yeah, it's, I always like kind of say more expanded frequency maybe, but. Yeah, um, I like that. But yeah. Now, what did you say again? What you, you called it? What was the term for frequency? I said expanded. Oh, just. Said, um, 
Um, like, what did I say? Or um, clear, I just from the central newer frequencies. Newer, okay. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, the new emerging consciousness, yeah, that's coming in mm-hmm. and the frequencies from, yeah. I know, my guides have said even not to say good and bad, to say what's most life-enhancing because we're, they're really, mm-hmm. we're, I guess, the, all that is is really trying to get out of the extremes of, um, you know, duality. Um so what so on a day so it's it's getting more comfortable with this do you find you'd look you know being knowing this and being more adept at this or having a connection do you find you look at things differently or life yes absolutely um you start seeing things from the perspective of the energy that originated them as opposed to the material outcome of them and so uh, every time you see things you're asking what was the origin of that where did you know what what energy initiated that but i also think that one of the bigger parts of of this awareness is realizing that much of the ways that we operate in the world is determined by our preconditioning and our preconditioning has a lot to do with trauma and so that becomes the lens through which we perceive the world and the more that we can do the work to um, clear the trauma in our bodies in our psyche in our energy field and be more um, clean, just be cleaner, then mm-hmm. our perceptions become more awakened and, and our ability to create something outside of our conditioning becomes awakened. And I, and I think that is a, a, I think that as we begin to open to this new awareness, it, it implies a responsibility to um, observe ourselves and, and eliminate these biases from our conditioned past and our traumas mm. and that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect i mean i mean all the time i'm doing yeah. things i'm like oh my god <laughs> yeah yeah you know that we're is a really good point that. yeah and i think again and it's interesting because so much of that is up right now in the collective not just consciousness but being acted out or the out picturing of that power over underpowered victim abuse. Um, mm-hmm. We've got so much the master slay. You know, there's all this. It's all the same thing, and yeah. Yeah. really wanting to hold on to that um, conditioning and condition response patterns, mm-hmm. which just blocks. It's almost like that is over, but we mm-hmm. keep replaying it. It keeps right. It's like. <laughs> The, you know, it, it it keeps getting brought into the present um, moment, and I so agree well, with you. You have to get beyond that, the conditioning, the pattern. Yeah, and you know, one of the ways I I kind of think about it, and um, you know, the more connected we are to the material world, the more we're locked into our story uh, related to the material world. Um, and I think sometimes I think about it as a language, that subtle energy is a language and and that as we receive subtle energy information and it comes into our aura and it gets translated through our chakras and metabolized and then it gets turned into emotions, into body sensations like you were talking before about getting goosebumps all over your body. It gets translated into gut feelings and inner knowings and just gnosis in a way and intuition. And that creates a different language to work with, an energy language that incorporates all of us, not just our mind and not just our words. And I think words um, tend to limit our ability to perceive. I, I have a Native American friend who is very fond of saying that we can't wake up using the same language that put us to sleep. And like, I always thought that what he meant was that language creates the constructs for how we think. And and of course, that is true. You know, we're trained to think a certain way, and it's hard to shift out of that. Um, But actually, one of my horses really showed me that that's really different. And, um, you know, I'll just quickly tell you the story. But so... I, I I take in horses that come, you know, that are troubled horses. And one, my newest one is a is a little um, 
a, a little apollosa named Pebbles. And, you know, she's a very anxious horse. And she controlled her anxiety by trying to control what was happening around her. She would bolt through doors afraid that something was going to be on the other side. She'd nip at people when they touched her. She threatened to kick. She never actually bit. She never actually kicked. She never actually hurt anybody. But when you were riding her, like the slightest little bit of leg squeeze and she'd jump forward and take off, it was like she was so hypervigilant and hypersensitive. Talking to her felt like she was being yelled at. And... I thought that all I had to do was be kind to her and and loving and use natural horsemanship um, methods and that she would, like all the other horses I've had, that she would respond to that and it would would be fine, but it, it wasn't. She didn't really respond to it. And what I began to realize is that the um, language that I was using with her, whether it was a leg squeeze or, or a command, a word command, was so coded in trauma for her that she would re-experience the trauma no matter how soft it was. And that the only way I was ever going to get through to her was with a completely new language. And I was very lucky to find a good trainer, and she worked with me, and she worked primarily with energy. If she wanted the horse to move, she sent her energy, and the horse moved. And so Pebbles and I began to work more in that energy realm, which for some reason I had never used, you know, never thought to use that way with the horses, and it was very interesting. Um, But when we're in trauma, we go into fight or flight or freeze, and we cannot think, we can't learn, we can't negotiate, we can't do anything except what we've already done. And so I I feel like if our words are coded with trauma, we have to move to a new language, and I think that is the language of energy. Mm, I would so agree with you. Yeah, I feel like our language... Will has to change and will change and probably mm-hmm. more diffused and maybe more more energy to say something and more words that describe something that we we don't have you know yet mm-hmm. we don't we don't have the um, and of course to me also when you're talking about the energy we're talking also about telepathy that projecting our yeah our energy, our will, or what our intention, um, which animal mm-hmm. beings are so amazing at um, mm-hmm. reading that. I think they have a lot to teach us, especially horses. Oh, my, well, animal dogs, cats, yeah. everything. But but horses yeah. are so yeah. sensitive to yeah. uh, energy, you know. They're, yeah, they really are. <laughs> it's just, Wow, since you know, I'm and, talking to you, I'm thinking it's really happening. It's really, <laughs> it's really happening. Um, it is so exciting to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, talk, ahead. Go, no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's exciting. It is exciting no, to talk like, to. Some, I know, right? It's like you're talking to to different people, and people. Everybody seems to be having having awakenings, if you will. You, you know, the title of your program. Everybody is having these awakenings, and and we're trying, we're, we're, we're like our, our feet are in the sand that's shifting. We're trying to find the solid ground of what these awakenings are and how to use them. And it's really exciting to have these conversations and to have a place that you're offering for people to come and, and um, bring their thoughts and, 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 you know, problems and concerns and successes. Yeah, I love it. And you're right, there's so many awakening. If you look governmental, educational, now we're talking energy, subtle energy, language, it's, it's happening in so many sectors in our, in mm-hmm. our life. You know, I think mm-hmm. virtually every part, um, and, and different people have interests and expertise in different parts, and it's coming together. I mean, it's just really like, Spirit, God, the all that is, innate intelligence, creative, whatever, the, whatever the names mm-hmm. and phrases, it's like this, almost like, you know, when um, after a rain, especially like in spring and stuff starts blossoming, you know, the grass gets greener and it's taller and then, you know, the little seeds have sprouted and then some have blossomed. There's just all these different um, areas start Mm-hmm. opening um and of course yeah it does bring back because i feel there's a there is a not a, innate but it's it's manifesting biological chemical 
physical, physiological, all of it, mental, emotional, knowing and understanding that we're not going back to something. <laughs> we're not mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. back to something. It's like it's in the unfolding, and that unfolding is something that is, well, through the subtle energy, it's it's not as tangible or perceived as what was. Um, maybe you kind of answer that because you did say about perception. So maybe that's because we perceive that the tangibility was always there and this mm-hmm. over focus on the material. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think what you're saying, what you know, the underlying information I'm getting from what, what we're saying here is that um, one of the things that one of the the barriers that we have to cross here is. Um, you know, that this language, this subtle energy language and this new um, arena that we're moving into where we accept that energy has agency is that it can be overwhelming to our bodies and the shifts that our bodies are going through um, can be scary and people people feel like they're losing their mind, they're going to lose their friendships, they're, yeah. they're not sure how this is impacting their health. They, you know, they feel disloyal to the, to the people in their story. I mean, so many different things come up for people around this this shift, and that that's one of the biggest things I think that kind of holds holds people back a little bit. And so, um, I think that understanding how your body is changing to receive these energies is probably an important part of it. Yeah, and to know that, that, of course, it would, these changes would, you know, would precipitate change Mm -hmm. in those parts of ourselves, and things Mm -hmm. would be different. Um, And there really is no map, but spirit or the subtle energy. There is no map. It's like it's a cosmic map. Exactly. Right. Exactly. (laughs) That's exactly right. (laughs) Right. A lot of people are trying to put the old map, and it just. And I think that sometimes can make it worse. It's like it's Mm -hmm. that's not. Um, working. So now I do want to touch upon your book, um, Subtle Energy Work. What is you had an earlier book, The Path of Energy, and now the most recently is Subtle Energy Work. Um, what does that entail? It's right up arts, right up the listeners' alley. So mm-hmm. this is going to be a great resource for them. Well, so the original um, book, The Path of Energy, was the first edition of this book, Subtle Energy Work. Um, And The Path of Energy I wrote back in 2011, I think it came out, and it was like a little ahead of its time. It just, not everybody was quite ready for it. Um, They just weren't quite ready for it. But it's exactly on time now, and I didn't really realize that, but the um, acquisition editor at the publishing house, Michael Pye, contacted me and said he thought it was time for this book to come back out. And so I reworked the book. I rewrote parts of it that had always kind of bothered me a little bit and and added a chapter on empaths. And I think that as we're going through the changes that we're going through, we're all becoming more empathic. And that is, um, I think that's a, a big part of what's going on. And, and so the and path piece here was to help people through that transition. And so the book itself is really going back to what we were talking about before of answering the question, once you accept that, you know, the agency of energy, then um, how do you function in that world? And so the book is, is like all different kinds of my experiences and how to function in that world and how to help your body access different um different frequencies. I think a lot um, how we construct our energy. Our energy is constructed in very specific ways based on our history and based on, you know, our story and all the other things. And and being able to shift into new ways of seeing things means that we have to shift those constructs, a constellation of of our inner energetic being. And so I had, through the course of my work, I had received 13 different um, meditations or activations, whatever you want to call them, that help shift those inner constellations so that you can access um, energy reality easier. And so everything in the book is kind of based on these 13 um, meditation activations. And then 
and then how you can use them in different ways to clear energy, to, um, you know, to remote view or use your intuition or telepathy and, and pretty much as comprehensively as I could. So my husband and I have been involved in consciousness research for, for many, many years. My husband was, um, is the, the first person who investigated crop circles back in the 80s and wrote the first book on it, co-authored the first book on it. So he's very, mm. he's been very much involved in, in this shifting paradigm, you know, for a long, long time. And so we, we do a lot of experiments together and we do a lot of energy work together. And so a lot of what is in this book um, are things that we've discovered at, in, in our journey. Mm, love it, love it. Oh, that's great. Oh, crop circle, I mean, that's another talk about, you know, phenomena there, energy. Mm -hmm. Let me see if anybody in the chat or anyone has any questions. Wow. Deep dive. I'm going to have to have you back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is so yummy. This is, um, and so neat. And I agree with you, the time is now. You know, it's yeah. like, I, back yeah. then, yeah, if it, 90, 2000, even 2000, I, I, you know, even 2012 to 15, 16, it still was not, mm-hmm. I, I think due to what's happened on the earth yeah. recent, yeah. people are, there. yeah, there's more opening, There's there's it's less yeah. solid, you know, mm-hmm. Um and mm-hmm. I think before I think people that, were looking right, less solid, like mm-hmm. yeah, it was a around. wave that's been coming, and and you know, and the wave is now much larger, and much more people have access to to what's going on. I think, I think you're absolutely right on that. Mm-hmm. Now, Cynthia, how can people? Um, what's the best way for people to reach you? Um, mm-hmm. I think you do do work. Well, I have I have a, a website, explorationsinenergy.com, and I have actually quite a lot of information on that website. I like to use it as an educational tool, and hmm. and you know there are contact informations and and um, you know the blog and and things like that. Um, I have to admit that I'm I'm not good at social media and. I'm only now really starting to pr- put out a regular blog. It's just um, felt very tiresome to me before, but suddenly it's becoming more fluid and more easy, easily accessed for me. And so I'm getting more involved in it e- and easier to um, therefore find and, and talk to. <laughs> talk to people. Yeah, it is great. I, I'm going to do it in doses. Because mm-hmm. it can be quite noisy and jarring. The the um, it's like a freeway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes when you click <laughs> click on it, and there you are, and woo. Um, yeah. Yeah, energetically, but um, that's good. And, and give the website again. I want to put it in the chat. Explorations. Explorations in energy. In energy. Com. Okay. Great. And then, of course, the book is Subtle Energy Work. Oh, my gosh. I'm just so – you made my day, I'm telling you. And I – oh, I just yeah. love talking this. Yeah. And then I'm just – it just, to me, shows how far we've – I mean, for you – I mean, the first guest, like I said, had a little sliver of a chapter. All his other chapters were quite meaty. But I thought, well, at least it's mm-hmm. there. And now you have a full-blown book. And have been talking about it and teaching about it, so that to me is like a really good, uh, really good indicator of where we're at and what's you know what's to come. And mm-hmm. especially that it's like a handbook because I do feel people need help in adjusting mm-hmm. and knowing that we're going in the quote unquote right direction. That you know this mm-hmm. isn't like you said earlier. You know there's there's kind of a fear of. Yeah, things lost, things being taken away. I mean, it, it, it's yes, yes, yeah. exactly. And um, <clears throat> you know, I think also as we were talking before that people them, we are changing. Our physical body is changing. Our our mental function is changing. And um, I think of this change as as taking us 
towards being more empathic. And so an empath is someone who feels, you know, who experiences other people's experiences, who feels other people's, and feels the Earth's experiences and animals and trees and and so lives the connectivity that we're talking about. And that can be really overwhelming as you're first getting into it. And I think that empaths at this time are the front of the current wave. And, there, you know, I mean, being empathic is a um, spectrum. It's not like you either are or you're not. There are many places along that spectrum. But people who are pretty far along it have a real difficult time sometimes um, knowing what's them and what isn't them and what the boundaries yeah. are and what their boundaries are. And therefore, they feel the pain of the earth. They feel other people's pain. They isolate themselves so that they don't have to feel other people's pains. And I and one of the purposes in writing this book is really to be a resource for us as we go through that these kinds of changes. And it's like one of the big aha moments I had in working in my practice with... Um, different empathic people is I always thought that what I needed to do was to teach them how to have better boundaries and I would do boundary work with them and and you know time after time after time they would just fail and I finally realized I'm asking them to be something they're not I'm asking them to mm-hmm. to be different than who they are they they are made without boundaries for a reason and I was completely yeah. ignoring that and what I've come to understand through working with people is that what helps an empath is shelter. And so the question yeah. is, what gives you shelter? You know, what shelters yeah. you? You know, because you're, you are made without boundaries, and that's the way you're supposed to be. Yes. I um, just did a post on that because, oh, I had to pull back a bit, and I actually told people, I'm not posting, I'm not doing as much. And then I just did, because I had to shelter, pull back, shelter. Mm -hmm. And I came out of my cocoon and I did a little reel talking about, um, you know, what I'd just gone through. Just in a little nutshell Mm -hmm. and opening people. Because I think in a way, like we're talking about it, but permission, I think people need to hear that's okay, that you need to pull back. You need the shelter. You need... um, you know, in our society or many of the societies, you know, that converge here, that that's like a big no-no. You know, go, keep going. What's you know, you can do it. Or, um, yeah. yeah. So just having that. Let's see. We've got Lynn in the chat. What is she saying? I have been exploring for myself how to do life, so to speak, from the subtle energy realm. A lot of it is living and making choices at the moment from the still place of the heart, perceiving from there. Yeah, now that's true, right? It really does. Um, 100% yeah. true. And and she's absolutely right as well that there, and, and you said this before, there is no map. There is no, you know, there's no owner's manual to our energy body. Mm-hmm. You know, this is something that we have to figure out. And my book does not try and give people a map either. It's like, here are some suggestions. Try them and see yeah. where they take you. And then, and then use your, um, use your experience to create your next step. It's like, this is just an experience to have and it might work the way it worked for me or it might not. It might take you in five other directions. And it's like, it's, there, there's no right or wrong. There's only more information and, and, I, she is so 100% right that it is what is in your heart. That's your intention. That is where we um, have access in, in Chinese medicine. Your heart is the seat of your shen, the seat of your spirit, the seat of where you connect with your higher, um, larger spiritual yeah. self. And so I completely agree. Yeah, well, I definitely believe we definitely need whatever it is, the books, MP3s, whatever, the nudges, the talk, mm-hmm. because the setup is the same, and, and it is that pause. I know sometimes I'll have multiple things to do, and I'll just pause and wait and just feel in my body which is the one, you know, what is the, mm-hmm. you know, connecting in beyond the mind, beyond the mm-hmm. words or thoughts of what I need to do, that there is one that has the most, life-enhancing energy that is the right. Um, 
funny. I did it the other day, and I was so – I can't even remember what it was exactly, but I had so much joy, and I had to do and, – and then by doing that to-do and project and focus first, it opened up for me to actually have more energy to do some of the stuff that I mm-hmm. really don't like doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and, and maybe another mm-hmm. time it'll be different, but that's that's what I receive. So, no, oh, you know, and, and I that reminds me. It's like the favorite book of mine that I wrote is called The Path of Emotions, and it's about the role of emotions in our energy awareness. And I I, I love the book because I think emotions are so underappreciated yes. and, and understood. But, you know, one of the emotions that is judged the most is resistance. I'm like, resistance is how we maintain our integrity. If you feel resistance, step back and let your body speak because something is happening. It's not that you're being awkward. It's not that you're, you know, um, rejecting uh, growth. It's that your body is telling you, hold on, you don't have enough information, not everything as, as it seems, step back. Take you know, take note. <laughs> so yeah, step I back. Yeah, yeah that's and what we well, do emotions. Mm-hmm. They're vibration, right? They're the frequency, and vi- they're yeah. telling us something. That's another communication there. Um, yeah, they're they're picking up. Oh my gosh! Okay, Cynthia, we are um, winding out of time, and I, I just look forward to. Um, having another conversation with you hopefully so yeah well, this was a lot of fun i really appreciate your making it so easy because i actually have a lot of anxiety about interviews and public speaking so oh. thank you for making it a pleasant experience <laughs> oh thank you i didn't even notice that it was just like i i was yeah so excited and you have just so much to share i mean gosh gotta get you well um, thank you even more out there. Thank yeah, you. this is important stuff. This is really important and like critical at this time, you know, necessary, really mm-hmm. necessary. Yeah. Wow. All right, Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. Um, I really, really appreciate you and what you're doing and just really having this conversation. It's just, I'm not kidding, it made my day. I'm going to be talking about this for a while. <laughs> Well, thank you very, very much, and thank you for all the good things you're putting out in the world and and the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, till next time. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, Jay Styling in there. Love the conversation. Oh, me too. Me too, Jay. Love the conversation. Absolutely. Jay, you're saying I even feel animals. Me as well. It's I see roadkill. Oh, yeah. Not, yeah, very empathic. Wow, this was great. This was so fun. I know all of you, I can't wait to hear. Um, leave me comments, whether on my YouTube channel, Patreon, Instagram. Let me know how you'd like this interview, this conversation, really more of a conversation and dialogue. Um, again, our guest was Cynthia uh, Andrews. The book is Subtle Energy Work. Um Explorations in Energy is the website, but everything is in the podcast description uh, below in this this episode. So, yeah, let me know if you get the book, how you like it, you know, what you use. Um, You know, I love subtle energy, so I am, like, totally energized. Um, Anyway, everyone, um, lots of love and light. I'm so glad for those of you that were able to connect into the podcast. Thank you, those that helped co-create it. You are always appreciated. If you want to connect with me more, Instagram, Patreon, where else? YouTube, um, and of course, here every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Until next time, continue to shine your light, share your insights, and of course, keep awake. I'm getting woke and staying woke. Awakenings broadcast every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Archive shows available on iTunes. For continued awakened conversations and insights, join the Awakenings Group on Facebook. And check out Michelle's blog at soulplayground.com. And keep awake. Are you